What's up, Gabers? Dreamcast Guy here, and this is Does It Suck? The show where we take a deep dive look at a new game and see what's good or bad about it. Today we're going to be discussing No Rest for the Wicked. This is developed by the people that made Ori and the Blind Forest, but now they've decided to basically make their own version of Dark Souls. Yes, that's right. What we're looking at is pretty much Diablo Dark Souls. It's a game with co-op and exploration and daily quests, but also with some slow, difficult, and incredibly brutal fights. Let's talk about the goods and the bads, because even in this early version of it, as much fun as I'm having, it's kind of busted. Let's discuss. Hi, I hope you're having a good day. If you could, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, let me just say right up front, this is technically in early access. It costs $35 to play this version of the game. It sounds like it's going to be a full $70 when it comes out here in a couple of months or next year, and you can tell that it's going to need a lot of work. The developers have said this early access version is roughly 25 hours of content. So yesterday, because I was so excited, I decided to sit down and play it for a little bit over 10 straight hours, trying to defeat some bosses, level up my gear, and really test the systems. And I must say, this is a project with a ton of potential. I'm obsessed with Diablo. I've got a big Diablo tattoo, but I'm also a big Dark Souls fan. So seeing someone attempt to merge those concepts is incredibly interesting. But let me break down just on a surface level how this works and what parts of it definitely kind of fall apart. No Rest for the Wicked is the kind of game that's about making your own character. You make a dude, and then you get crash-landed on this terrible, corrupted island. We're some legendary hero, and so essentially, when everybody else dies, they stay dead. Whereas we can come back again and again. There's these blue checkpoints throughout the game that you're going to encounter. Whenever you die, you go back to that. The most recent one you touched is the one that you will respawn at, which means you really have a chance to kind of throw yourself into combat and die perpetually and not really worry about your character de-leveling or some sort of terrible permanent cost. Now, when you're fighting, you're going to notice that things are very slow. Now, this obviously has a bunch of fighting that is heavily based upon the Dark Souls or Elden Ring style of combat, meaning that it does have a stamina system. It's got parries, it's got blocks, it's got dodge rolls. But more than that, this is the kind of game where every single encounter can go terribly wrong. My favorite thing about Dark Souls is the fact that you can't really relax. Anybody can kill you, and that's the way this is. From crabs to random zombies to bandits, everybody, if they have a chance, is going to instantly kill you. But here's where the game really sets itself apart. This is a structured adventure. It's not randomized. It's not procedurally generated. The quest I'm going on is the quest you are going on. But while you're doing this, leveling up is not really done in the typical sense. So, like, the way this works is that enemies don't just instantly respawn. If you're fighting through, like, a big decayed fort and somebody manages to drop a barrel on your head and kill you or whatever, then when you go back to that previous checkpoint, nothing has respawned, meaning that you have a bunch of chances to go through a particular area, but if you want to try and truly purposefully gain levels, grind and get yourself permanently stronger, you're going to have to actually backtrack. And this brings me to one of the major downsides I had with the game, which is two separate things at once. First off, this fog of war system. Since the map is permanently established and there's definitely a correct direction to be moving, at least in this early access version of it, it makes it where if you want to try and grind and level up, you would think that you could just run in circles and kill enemies again and again and again, but they all stay dead. 
Instead, you need to leave an area for about 20 minutes so the map becomes covered up again. The fog of war will actually recede. It'll come back, and as the map gets recovered, re-exploring it means the monsters have come back, which means a lot of times the best way to level is to go to town, pick up some daily quests, and do what they say, whether it is go kill crabs in a fort or go pick up some random herbs or try and mine some materials. And I feel like this system on paper is interesting, but to me, it does kind of suck. If I want to level up, I should be able to just kill some monsters. It feels weird that I have to do this really big, overly time-consuming method. Now, when you hit enough XP, you instantly level up. It's, it's not like you have to go back to a checkpoint or rest in town or anything like that. When you've gotten enough experience points, you immediately level up. And this does have the standard stat system. You get three stat points per level. You can put it into health, strength, stamina, and then a bunch of magic talent trees that I never got a chance to use any of those. I don't know what any of those do. I mean, I'm probably going to make a magic character at some point, but in this early version, since I'm obsessed with Berserk, I decided to make a character with a giant heavy two-hander. But the other part of this that I just really didn't like is weapon degradation. All your gear breaks when you die. That's the way it works in Diablo, but this isn't that style of game. Like, when you're playing Diablo, dying hundreds and hundreds of times completely makes sense because you're just throwing yourself around a big, fun, randomized map. Whereas here, if I'm supposed to be attempting a boss fight, like part of the fun of Dark Souls or slow, heavy games like this is just bashing yourself against a boss over and over and over again to learn their mechanics, to learn their attacks, and perfectly dodge it for that final win. But here, every time you die, you lose 10% of your total weapon durability, which means you have to keep teleporting back to town to fix your gear over and over and over again. And additionally, if you're under leveled, it kind of sucks because it goes, okay, now I have to completely leave this area, go to a previous area and actually level up there. And now when I want to fight that boss again, I have to re-clear that entire dungeon because it doesn't save. You can have one current checkpoint. You can't teleport to any checkpoint you want, which means that if you're at the back of a dungeon and that's your current checkpoint, you got to fight your way all the way out and then later all the way back in. I feel like I'm complaining a lot, but uh, I do want to say that I am enjoying this game for what it currently is. I think the art is great. I think the visual presentation is awesome. I do think the fighting is incredibly fun. I guess I'm just confused by the hundreds of tiny choices that to me don't fully make sense. The menus are messy. The optimization is terrible. If you actually look at this game currently on Steam, uh, the reviews are very negative because a lot of people are saying it straight up doesn't run. Uh, I mean, you're probably saying, okay, Dreamcast guy, that's a cute cat, but how does this run on Steam Deck? It pretty much doesn't run on Steam Deck, and to me, that is disappointing. I mean, Diablo 4 runs on freaking Steam Deck better than this game, which has objectively way worse graphics. I know this game is going to improve. I guess I'm just a little bit disappointed about its current state. I do see people already refunding and stuff. I think the character movement is good. The combat is awesome. The The weightiness of these boss fights, everything that is currently in here on paper totally makes sense. I just wish we had some extra options. They are going to be releasing lots of patches coming soon. I believe one of the first major patches they've already announced will be co-op, so other people can play with you. That's going to be great. I mean, I'm going to keep playing this. To be very clear, I have 11 hours in this in just that first day, and I'm going to play a lot more of it. I think the, the core concept of this seems to be the exact game I have always dreamed of. It's just that stuff like weapon degrading, stuff like random loot but in a non-random world, the idea of like puzzles in zones that are just so difficult. This game again and again feels like it's trying to be hard instead of trying to be fun. And while it is fun, 
it's definitely way more in the brutal side than it is in the entertaining side. Like one of the toughest aspects of this game that definitely frustrated me the most is that there isn't a standard potion system. You will occasionally find stuff that will restore your mana or your stamina and stuff like that. But when it comes to healing yourself, you have to pick fruit or pick up mushrooms and herbs and stuff like that and then take those materials to a campfire and cook dishes. This is the only way to heal in the entire game that I have found so far in my first 10 hours. And you know why that's annoying? Because it means that when I'm trying bosses, I have a total finite amount of attempts because I'm going to run out of potions. I'm going to weapon, run out of weapon durability. I'm going to run out of patience. And to me, it sucks that sometimes I would save up my extreme extremely tiny amount of healing items for an hour dying against something perpetually hoping all right now this is an attempt that is worth actually healing and to me that does kind of suck i wish this game was not more forgiving i don't think that's the word i'm looking for i wish this game was a little bit better tuned but obviously this is the first day of early access. It's going to get better. I think currently there isn't even keybinds or you can't program keybinds. It's early access. But if you're charging $35 for early access, I think I'm allowed to roast it like a standard full price total release game. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. I hope you guys are as well. But what do you guys think about no rest for the wicked? I mean, certainly to me, I'm going to be keeping my eye on this, and I'm definitely going to keep playing it, but tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. Oh man, uh, playing this as Guts from Berserk with a gigantic two-hander that I just dropped on people, let me tell you, it was fun. I love playing the slow, heavy badass. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.